In the middle of working on other projects, I have had a sudden urge to make a simple RPG. I am giving myself one week to make this RPG with a dungeon, an island, and a simple storyline. This game is published, so to miss any spoilers, you can play the game in the description. But there is only one rule, you must like the video. Warning: This game includes voice lines done by myself. To avoid ear bleeding accents, I want to warn viewers and players of trauma that ensues. After a couple minutes I got a working character, then I worked on the camera. The camera was tricky, since I haven't done anything like this on an RPG setting, it was a little bit different and getting everything smooth was not perfect, however, after a little bit of tweaking, I finally got something that I liked. Now I'm getting on more of the fun idea of the game, where you can harvest resources. So I'm going to start with trying to make a script that can be universal, that you can plop on any object and instantly you can harvest it. Now I have a script that lets me harvest resources from different objects. All you need to do is add the script, select the resource, and it instantly works. With the game coming along, it's time to work on some UI and an inventory for the resources that actually account for anything. Here's what I've conjured up in the short little time that I've been working on the inventory. I have added a custom cursor so you can hover over items and see that you're actually about to harvest them. You can also open the inventory and see that it will be adding items every time you hit a resource. It will also let you swap items whenever you click two different resources and swap. Before the end of the day, I wanted to complete two things. Adding quests and having functionality with NPCs. And with what you're seeing right now, you're seeing the functionality between the NPCs and seeing how the quest function and work with gathering resources, but will have functionality with killing NPCs or other creatures and speaking to other NPCs. That is where the project is after day one, and I'll see you tomorrow. Day 2 I started out with the goal of trying to make AI in combat, since the game is pretty boring just how it is. Working over 5 hours on one script to make an AI that feels subpar is a little bit defeating. However, I have made the script very plug and play where you can drop it on almost any game object and it'll work as well. Every time I try to make a combat system I never do it in third person because animations when attacking are very difficult. That's why I like FPS games since it's pretty simple to add an attack method but I feel like I did good for my first time on this setting. Doing this took too long since the scripting behind it was a lot more than I was expecting for something so small. I didn't just add one animation for attacking, I added several. Some for sword and shield, some for just a single sword, some for dual wielding, and also for two-handed weapons. Having about four animations for each one of those categories. After working on the combat and AI for so long, I chose to work on something a little bit calmer. And here it is. It's equipping items, armor, tools, weapons, all of the above to make your character look cool, to feel cool, to be strong. Everything is calculated with the item and their relative armor and damage output. All weapons have a piercing capability to minus off the enemy's armor and just a couple other things that you can find out if you play the game. That concludes day two on working on this project, and I'll see you tomorrow. Day three started with me making portals, so I have the capability of adding teleporters around the map and to go into dungeons and boss rooms. Next I wanted to add the dungeon capabilities, but I didn't have enough enemies to do so. So I worked with a little bit on adding multiple varieties of enemies. However, these enemies aren't that great since they are low poly, I just think they're too low poly, they're just not the perfect style, but it's all I have. After searching through my assets, I found that I had a dungeon architect plugin that lets me build dungeons instantly, and I had a dungeon asset set that I felt fit the theme of this game very well. And I combined the two and this is what I have. With a little bit more work, I have a dungeon inside the game. It works perfectly and you can enter it, however it does not have any items or objects spawning inside of it yet. Since I wanted the dungeon to be full of enemies and loot, I had to work on both the ability to spawn loot and to spawn enemies. 
I made a enemy spawner script that spawns enemies based on a difficulty rating that the spawner has, and the farther you get on in the dungeon, the difficulty goes higher, meaning you'll fight difficult enemies. However, I haven't set up the enemies yet. All the enemies have AI and function, but their health and armor do not scale with their difficulty, which will have to come later when balancing the game. Next, I wanted to work on loot. However, I wanted to work on a script that I could use for chests, loot, items, dropped items, keys, everything. And that's what I did, but it took me a couple hours, and now it's the end of the day. But I feel like I didn't make that much progress over the last couple days, and I'm probably going to stay up later to get other stuff done. Before going to bed, I had one thing I really wanted to work on. I wanted to work on the world that this game is going to be based in. As much as I love my testing area, I want to make something that feels more finished, so that I feel less stressed later on when working on the actual map. And this is the final product of my work on the map. I didn't just make this world, I used the demo scene from the nature pack I was using and I took most of it and had to apply nav mesh, all the little things that my AI use, and it just made my life a little bit easier on myself for this week. Day 4 started the tedious task of working on the first town of the game. The longest part about making the town was actually the player maneuverability around it. But after a while, this is what I came out with. The rest of the day I started working on a ability system, kind of like casting spells, but you unlock these with your level. I spent most of the day trying to figure out how to make these spells actually damage enemies, and right now it's very janky, but I'm going to leave it just for this week, and if I work on it this game again, I'm going to totally fix that. With only three days remaining, and this being one of them, I'm going to start working on the main story, the balance, and create three armor sets for the player to use. And after a while, I populated the town with some NPCs, all of them are functional and can be talked to. I also made some traders that you can buy items from, and added some quests for the main storyline. I also spent a lot of the day trying to balance out the AI and the weapons, armor, etc. Which, after making a lot of spreadsheets and then doing math to figure it out, I think I got something pretty good. Before the end of the day, I created a storage system, and this way, you can store your items instead of holding everything you own. It's called a bank, similar to what RuneScape would have. However, this bank will actually take any items that you pick up and put it instantly in your bank if your inventory is full. It's day 6, the second to last day, meaning I only have today and tomorrow. That's terrifying. But most of the coding part of the game is done, and now I'm just going to be working on quests and the downloading page on itch.io. Since I don't have too much time to make this whole game, I'm giving myself quite a small scope for the storyline. It's not meant to be the most gripping story, but it's meant to keep you entertained while you play for a couple minutes, because the game really isn't that long, and after a while can get boring but I think it's pretty good. While creating the storyline and quests for the game, I was also making voice lines for those characters and your interactions over the quests. Spending hours in audacity trying to make perfect voice lines, I kind of gave up and just started doing subpar voice lines. But after a while, I had the story complete and implemented into the game. I also completed the itch.io page, and I think this looks really good for something I haven't really done. I don't really do pages or things where you can download stuff, but I think this looks pretty good. And a little bit earlier, I made a trailer for my game, and it's pretty short, and there's some clips from this video in it but I think it works really well. Next, I wanted to work on a main menu. I wanted to get something that looked clean and that showed the map, but didn't spoil anything. And this is what I came up with. I love this menu. It's simple, and the loading screen is excellent because you get to see the map and it's just atmospheric.
today I thought was going to be easy. However, after building the game, it is as slow as you can get it. I think there's something wrong with a couple components that are making the game lag a lot. So the game is unplayable and I have to fix this lag before the end of the day, otherwise I have to release a game that's very laggy. Now I'm not well versed in how to optimize a big game, because normally when I make a game it's pretty small and I don't have to worry about it as much. But this is kind of a big issue. However, this profiler seems like the game is running fine, so I don't know why it's running so terribly when it's a built game. After multiple times of just testing random builds to see if it worked, I found out that Unity, which is impressing me every day more and more, has a built-in build version of the profiler that you can see exactly what's going on with your build which helped me determine that I had a big issue on my hands that I could probably fix. After messing around with the settings of my game more and a couple components off other objects, I fixed the issue of lag and also had another issue on my hand. This issue is that you couldn't actually click the resources. This was a little bit frustrating and took me a couple hours to fix, but this is why I left the seventh day to solely build the project. After fixing that issue and then playing the whole game through to make sure everything worked, I now have my finished build. Now all I have to do is build it for Mac and Linux and put it on the website. And there you have it, a whole built game in a week. RPG, storylines, voice lines, all these things that I didn't think I could possibly do and I think the game turned out great. If you happen to enjoy this video, please subscribe or like. This is like a lot of effort, and it's kind of fun to see some feedback. Uh, thanks for watching. Play the game if you'd like. Have a good one.